hey girl hey welcome back to my channel it's your girl misha thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review child now this review right here honey has a little bit of tea added to it i know we all heard last week on tmz that allegedly honey that the snowdens are involved in a domestic dispute involving him and one of the sister wives crystalline child i knew they couldn't be trusted okay i didn't trust dimitri at all and i don't trust ashley according to tmz they're reporting that both ashley and dimitri have been physically and verbally abusive to crystal and honey she got the hell out of dodge okay now i'm side eyeing them throughout this entire episode and or review child let's get into it when the episode first opens up, we're back in Cabo, Lover's Island, okay, with the Manfields. Danielle was saying, you know, it's been an emo emotional roller coaster, and I feel like Roberta wasn't being honest that being intimate was important to her. Danielle, I'm not going to tell you again. It's not Roberta. It's the slime ball you married, then divorced. He probably lied and told her she expects intimacy to happen now, little sister. Child, ain't no telling what he's telling her. He cannot be trusted at all. So she's like, you know, I'm not upset that they did it. It's just that I thought we were sacrificing it so we could all be together. They did sacrifice when he tried to tuck you in at first night, but y'all ended up sleeping three to a bed. And Garrick sac sacrificed you to be with the little wife. So some sacrificing has been done, honey. I don't know what you're talking about. Sacrificing has happened. <laughs> I'm just saying. She said, you know, I try to laugh it off, but it definitely need, I definitely need to tell Garrick how I'm feeling today. Honey, he ain't gonna care. But okay, go on, set yourself off. Then we see Roberta and Garrick walk into the room. Garrick, what are these Daisy Dukes you are wearing? I don't want to ever see that much of your ashy lower half, honey, ever. Ew. Okay. Yuck. Garrick said, you know, it's all new and a learning process. Hmm, I'm sure. Then they meet up with Danielle, right? So Roberta tells Danielle, she's like, I'm going to take a shower and leave them a little alone. What is a little alone? for? Alone for a little while? Okay, we got it, Roberta. Sure. Roberta probably thinking, huh, here's your chance to have your quickie so that we can be even and I can stop feeling guilty. Okay, girl, go on, do what you got to do. Get it popping. Once they get alone, they start awkwardly talking, which is strange because you've been married for so many years right before you got this divorce only to bring this lady over to the States. OK, so Danielle said, you know, truth be told, I had some jealousy issues after hearing about your sex. The, uh, every time she explains it this way, I'm just so baffled. Honey, those are normal emotions. If I saw my husband who I've been with for years say he was intimate with someone other than me and I'm not used to that, a normal person would be jealous. So like, don't make it seem like there's something wrong with you because you're becoming jealous because of this. That's what I don't like. She said, it wasn't easy because I wasn't expecting it. Honey, instead of him apologizing, he says, I know you feel Roberta doesn't value you, but she told me today that she loves you so much that she would leave me for you. Gaslighting, okay? Child, Danielle had the stupidest smirk on her face. She was looking like, well, buddy, this little experiment may be over. <laughs> she was looking like, hey, this is what I needed to hear. She says, that's a pretty big, big deal. Then she starts crying and saying, that helps me to know that this isn't just about you. Then Garrick starts crying, but honey, he probably crying because he could possibly lose Roberta. He definitely was not crying because Danielle was crying. That's for sure. He could care less about her emotions, honey, her feelings, any of that. She says she knows Roberta has a deeper heart, but she didn't know she felt that deeply. Danielle says, um, you know, I want to know I'm enough for you. He says, um, well, you're definitely enough for me. Child. God put us together and that was the biggest blessing of my entire life. Honey, I'm not convinced. I don't buy nothing that you're selling, honey. No, thank you. Danielle said, thank you for having me. Girl, he didn't invite you over for dinner. Tell me some thank you for having him. Girl. Be quiet, Danielle, child. Then she starts saying, you know, is it my turn for a quickie? And then he starts laughing. Oh, 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 like Beavis and Butthead. Honey, if you have to ask, it's a no. Over in L.A., we see Taylor still freeloading and hoping to spend the night. Taylor is with the Snowdens at the WWE Smackdown, allegedly. Okay. Dimitri and Ashley talk about Taylor just basically inviting herself to stay over forever. And so Ashley said, considering it was her visit, you know, she was shocked. 
because she thought that she was going to leave at the end of it. She said once Crystal and said yes, and they felt like it was cool. So Ashley said her biggest thing is the children. What exactly are y'all teaching these children by introducing them to all these women? And what are their titles when you introduce them to these women? I'm just curious of that because I mean, they're just in and out, honey. It's a revolving door of women. So she's like, I see how she interacts with them and she's really good with them. But I don't, you know, I just think there's a lot we don't know yet. Y'all don't know nothing about this stray, honey. Y'all done picked her up and just kept her in the house. Honey, it doesn't work like that. She doesn't have her tag. She hasn't gotten her shots. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Like, it's just ridiculous. This whole thing to me is just ridiculous, child. I'm just, I'm sorry, y'all. So she asked Dimitri, so are we in agreement that this is a firm yes? Of course, it's a yes for him. Ashley thinks Taylor is going to be a fun person to have as a friend slash babysitter. Did y'all notice that Taylor was like advertising her henna with her shirt? Child, Taylor looking for a come up, child. She want everybody to know about dope henna because look how I just remembered it. I'm not watching it. I'm just saying, honey. She said now that she's made her decision on the fly, it's time to let her mom know. So she calls her mom. Hello. Hey, mom. She said her mom is her BFF. She told her about the Snowdens, but she thought her mom probably thought it was going to be a joke. Okay. So she on the phone with the mom. All right. She said, you know, I was coming to meet them and I have decided to stay. What are your thoughts? The mom just is completely quiet. Honey, it's crickets. So her mom said, um, stay for how long? And she said, the goal is forever. Her mom said, um, you know, I'm not over the moon about it. It's a big deal because you're my daughter. She said, I still want to have the husband and the kids. It will just look a little different. So she said, um, why does it have to be a sister wife? And why are you sharing a man? He has many options, but your only option is him. Honey, preach mama. Honey, tell her. Child, let the church say amen. Y'all are sharing him, but he gets to choose between the three of you. Honey, and probably even more of that. This could go on forever. And Ashley just want to keep having kids and keep finding somebody to watch them. So ain't no telling how long it'll go on. Okay, so Taylor said, you know, she's not getting her blessing right now, but she hopes that her mom does decide to come around. After hearing her mom, it feels like a lot to think about. Sure. Over at the winders or the winders, Tammy and Sophie, dressed like the Bopsy twins. Honey, y'all share a man. Y'all don't have to share a wardrobe as well child what and so sophie tells us it's been several months since covid and ephraim is now three months colton's routine is still the same but the postpartum has was hard so tammy had to help out more and tammy said you know i felt like i was doing everything alone honey welcome to my world child i ain't got a sister wife or even a sister to help okay so it's Colton's birthday. So they're cooking him a birthday dinner, some chicken Alfredo, because that's his favorite. And then Colton tells us he's turning 33. I was like, what? Child, you look aged, honey. Might be all these wives you got to take care of. So they are revisiting the fact that Kim may be a potential third sister wife. Colton said, you know what? That's too much right now. <laughs> Colton said, I can't do no more. He said he had some concerns, okay? So he said, you know, I just didn't have a spark with Kim. And they were like, well, maybe it was because it was over the phone. So you just never know. So then he starts to talk about the Bible and starts to talk about God. I'm trying to figure out what Bible are y'all reading, honey? Child, Colton says, if God says it's okay, then it's okay. Over with the Clarks, honey, this was a shock, okay? But it really wasn't a shock to me, honey, because she's a young girl. We talk to the Clarks and they say COVID has taken over production but now they can safely resume right so we see head and shoulders aka Jared with the kids so Vanessa said you know she's continued to work but the schools the daycares and all of that they're closed so head and shoulders is daddy daycare see this is what he was trying to avoid by having Kayla around okay that's the reason why he wanted her there the producers asked about Kayla right and so he said, due to COVID, things got a lot more different. So they show him like trying to reach out to her, but she's not really receptive to it. Right. So they show Vanessa washing dishes as, um, you know, she's stating that Kayla decided to stay with a friend and the communication is difficult. And she doesn't know if it's COVID or if she's just choosing not to communicate. Honey, she's choosing it. And it must suck to wash your own dishes, huh? I bet you wish you would have never complained about that microwave now, huh? <laughs> That's what I thought. Baby Kayla living her best life, free of y'all and your non-headboard, okay? 
the Clark said they decided to quarantine separately because of the way that Kayla moves outside the home. And then it became even harder to communicate with her. I mean, she don't want to be communicated with because COVID made you think of some things. Okay. Vanessa said, you know, I would love for her to come back. But in the end, they ended up giving her her space she was asking for. Child, Kayla is young and COVID made her realize that life is short. Don't waste your youth playing second fiddle and maid to these people. Okay. She was like, you know what? People are dying on a daily basis. Let me be free. And I do not blame you, Kayla. Congratulations. So they ended up having a talk with Kayla and decided to end things. So they show pictures of Kayla, honey. She making videos, smiling, taking Instagram pictures, living her best young free life. Okay. Jerry said, you know, Kayla hadn't decided what she wanted for her life and he didn't think she would go outside the home or that she should and that she wanted to be on her own. So Vanessa said, you know, it hurts because she was with us for almost two years and we really just can't force it. Child, Kayla got out, honey. Good for you. Now let's get to the mess, child. Back over here in L.A., Y'all know the COVID restrictions are starting to be in place. They're closing down the borders and all this is happening in real time over while this is being taped, right? So Ashley said Taylor has been living there for a while, but her and Dimitri haven't been intimate yet. So they haven't started sharing days and all that good stuff. So they felt like with the borders closing that they needed to expedite an extended visit with Crystal and her kids, honey. I bet she hadn't made, I bet she wish she hadn't made that choice, honey, to stay with these monsters, allegedly. So Ashley said, you know, although Chris isn't moving in, she will stay for a longer period this time. And now she's bringing her kids. So, so Taylor said, you know, how do you feel about her coming? Uh, no, Ashley asked Taylor, how do you feel about her coming? And so Taylor said, well, she already feels like my sister. I mean, we talk all the time, so it's not going to be anything different from me. The test is how Ashley's big energy will mesh with Crystalline's more subdued and mellow energy. Okay. Two hours later, Crystalline shows up, honey, with the kids in tow, child. Oh, my goodness. Every time I see this now, honey, my nerves are going to get bad because I know what they are allegedly doing to this lady. And Taylor, where are you? Honey, probably skipped on off down Sunset Boulevard, start playing games on Venice Beach, doing henna tattoos for a dollar fifty. Child ain't no telling what Taylor doing, okay? Crystalline said, you know, it was a great feeling to be there, and I'm so excited to start my new life. Honey, this didn't age well, did it? Dimitri said, you know, having her there is more love. Mm-hmm. Well, honey, according to TMZ, it don't seem like no love is being had up and through. Seems like you're choking and punching and kicking. That is the opposite of said love, honey, allegedly. Crystalline said she told her family about it, and they were surprisingly supportive. Uh, Taylor wonders if Chris is being her being there will change how fluid things have been. It changed some things, honey, and just not sure exactly what. But the streets is talking. Over at the Winders, we see Colton. He's checking in with Tammy because of how she's been feeling. You know, she's been overwhelmed. Everything has been in a disarray ever since Ephraim was born. And they talk about the fact that Tammy wants to have more kids. She's been trying for years to no avail. She had a positive pregnancy test and didn't really want to tell Colton because if something happened, she didn't want to hurt his feelings. So they're both just struggling with the pregnancy news. Not much happening over there. Let's go on back over to Cabo San Lucas, shall we? So they're having their last dinner. Danielle said, you know, tomorrow Bert will go back to Brazil. I'm sure you're going to be happy, okay? And then we'll go back to Colorado. I'm sure Garrick is going to be miserable. The trip has had some ups and downs, but it has strengthened her relationship with Roberta. That's the only relationship that has been strengthened. Let us just keep track of that, okay? Roberta said, you know, thank you for the divorce. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't be able to reach you in America. Child, sounds to me like thank you for being gullible so I can get to the States. Roberta, I got my eye on you, honey. Both of them and my third eye too. Honey, I just think you want to get that visa and get over to the States. I don't trust you like that. I don't think you're as sweet as you're letting on, honey. You got a little spice to you. So then she says, you know, divorce is just a signed piece of paper. It doesn't mean your husband doesn't love you. Um, It's more than just a signed piece of paper. Yes, it does. It also means you can't call him your husband. It also means he can leave you high and dry for the likes of you. Danielle, don't let these two shysters manipulate you, child. Uh-uh. She said the trip was really good despite the jealousy, you know, and then here go Garrick. He starts babbling about their 
There may be fears, but God is there to comfort. And all they need to do is hear from the U.S. Embassy and find out how quickly she can get there. And even though the distance is long and hard, they will make it through. A crock of bull, okay? Roberta says she's really sad, but God will see her through. Y'all better stop playing with G.O.D., okay? I'm just telling you right now. Garrick said, Roberta's going back to Rio and we're going back to Colorado. And it's going to be very hard for him because he loves her. He can't imagine Danielle or Roberta being away from him. Child, he was crying like somebody died. And the only reason why he threw Danielle in there was for good measure. And so he didn't look like such a jerk. But I mean, that ship has sailed. So you might as well say how you feel, honey. You do not care about Danielle. So Danielle's smiling while he's crying. And all three of them are looking crazy. Danielle claims, you know, I'm sad to leave. And that I hope, you know, that Garrick will still be happy with just us in Colorado. Danielle, do you see how crazy that sounds? You hope that Garrick will be happy with just you in Colorado. Child, if y'all don't get some therapy down in Colorado and leave Garrick and his bucket of tears, honey, I don't know what to tell you, child. And that concludes this review for um, Seeking Sister Wives. We are on season three, episode seven, Miss You Much. Child, I just don't know what to say. With all the allegations and everything that's happening, I mean, this show is unfolding right before our eyes and it is a mess, honey. It's it's no telling what's happening up and through these homes, okay? Y'all let me know down in the comments if you would like for me to make a separate video about what happened with the Snowdens. I do have a few views on it, but I just wanted to make sure y'all will actually watch it. Please do not hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video. Tell a friend. Honey, phone a friend, do whatever you got to do. Just keep coming back for more. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.